Well, welcome everybody to a very special series called the COVID-19 Wellness Series that is uh, put together by VServe Canada in association with ERA Arts in support of Trillium Health Partners you know, and the Trillium Health Partners Foundation. They have three hospitals that Trillium takes care of, the Mississauga Hospital, the Credit Valley Hospital, and the Queensway site. A regional hospital providing world-class health care for a healthier community right here in the GTA. My name is Jake Deer. I am blessed to be sitting on the board of the Trillium Health Partners Foundation. And joining me is my dear friend and host, uh, as well as the founder of Era Arts, an organization along with VSERV Canada that are doing exceptional work. And they're the ones that are bringing this COVID-19 wellness series together. Today, we have a very, very special guest. I'm going to invite Anu. Anu, welcome. Uh, and please tell us a little bit about it. But before we do that, Anu, speak a little bit about the, the impetus behind uh, COVID-19 wellness series. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the COVID-19 wellness series. At the foremost, I would like to bring the greetings from Premier Ford, Mayor Crombie, and Trillium Health Partners Foundation for endorsing and supporting the COVID-19 wellness series. Thank you to VServe Canada, Trillium Health Partners, and ARA Arts on the launch of the incredible initiative to highlight mental health and wellness. I know this pandemic has been tough for a lot of people, especially on their mental health. And the reality is that no one is immune to it. Everyone can sometimes experience burnout, depression, anxiety, and isolation. I hope that through this, this series, you can learn how to care and maintain your mental health. Your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Even though you may feel alone or helpless, I want you to know we have your back. If you need someone to talk to, please reach out to some of the amazing mental health and addiction agencies in your community. Thank you and God bless you. Mayor Bonnie Crombie here from the great city of Mississauga, sending my best wishes to all the organizers and participants attending the COVID-19 Wellness Series hosted by VSERV Canada and ARA Arts in collaboration with Trillium Health Partners. COVID-19 pandemic has brought so many uncertainties to our lives and has disrupted our way of living. It's okay to not feel okay during these uncertain times. It's important to stay active and stay connected mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. The COVID-19 Wellness Series is an opportunity for people to de-stress and take care of their mental health and well-being. By showing up at today's session, you are making your mental health a priority and you should be very proud of yourself. Brighter days are ahead. In the meantime, stay healthy and stay safe. Hello, my name is Nicole Lamont. I'm the Vice President of Philanthropy for Trillium Health Partners Foundation. It is my privilege to get to thank you for everything that you have done for Trillium. For those of you who may not be as familiar with Trillium, we are the hospital system that serves close to 2 million people across our Credit Valley Hospital site, Mississauga Hospital, and the Queensway Health Centre, right into West Toronto, through to Oakville, and north up to Milton and Georgetown. We have a very large catchment area and a very full offering of programs, including mental health, the largest in our region. We are so appreciative of your support of our COVID-19 wellness series. Your support is ensuring that patients and families have access to the mental health care supports that they need when they need it the most. We are just so appreciative. Thank you for your support. We also understand how much time and energy and dedication goes into organizing events like this. And I want to thank Anu Stravasta and your committee for everything that you have done. Thank you on behalf of the many people who will benefit from your time and your generosity. Have a wonderful event. So welcome to the COVID-19 Wellness Series organized by VSERV Canada in association with ARA Arts in support of the Trillium Health Partners. Two great organizations who have come together during COVID and 
it is the brainchild of these two organizations. When the lockdown happened in March, and a few months later, mm -hmm. when everyone was still trying to get a grip on COVID-19 and the pandemic, we serve Canada, which is a health and wellness organization, and Aura Arts, which is a social wellness organization, uh, they got together and came up with the initiative of COVID-19 wellness series. Uh, the series is uh, 10 virtual workshops, which are organized uh, with doctors, medical doctors, um, and wellness experts on one hand, and on the other hand, we have the allied professionals and people um, who practice the traditional, the alternative methods like yoga and meditation. And the idea is to really help each and every one of us during these difficult times uh, with sharing some of the COVID-19 coping strategies for mental health and wellness. And today's workshop, we have a university graduate who is pursuing public health program. We know in this day and age um, in our country, in Canada, how important is the role of public health. And we are delighted to have Richa Srivastava, who is an honors graduate with a Bachelor of Medical Science and is now pursuing Master of Public Health at the University of Western Ontario. In the light of COVID-19 pandemic, she is here to share her experiences and learnings from the public health program and its relevance in today's world. I'm delighted to welcome Richa, and here is the first question. What is the role of public health in Canada? So, hello everyone. Um, my name is Richa. So yes, so the role of public health in Canada um, is greatly talked about nowadays, especially due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's really important that people understand the stance of public health in society um, and their outlook. So public health in lay terms overlooks essentially just the health of populations or the communities. So you might be familiar with your doctors that provide um, individual uh, patient care, um, whereas public health looks at the population health um, on, a, on a larger scale. So in particular, public health has been defined as the science and art of preventing disease. Um, this sector focuses on prolonging life, improving quality of life, promoting welfare on a populational level. Um, some of the goals of public health professionals are to improve surveillance of diseases, investigating health problems and health hazards, informing, educating, and empowering people about health issues, mobilizing community partnerships, collaborating with stakeholders, developing policies, informing um, and enforcing, sorry, bylaws and regulations, um, and providing personal health services um, to everyone in the population. And also to provide research and new insights and innovate, innovative solutions. Public health also aims to assess the inequities present in society, um, where some communities may not have the same access to resources such as the indigenous populations. With respect to COVID-19, all efforts in public health have now been shifted and diverted and are now, now largely focused on containing this pandemic. And as you may have been experiencing in your local cities, this includes massive amounts of public health messaging, translating COVID knowledge to the communities and advocating implemented guidelines such as social distancing and mask wearing. Um, public health in Canada also works uh, very closely with international organizations that some of you may be familiar with, such as the uh, World Health Organization. Oh my God, that is quite a wealth of information. I did not realize that um, the, the public health in itself uh, not only encompasses the governmental aspect of it, but also the people to people, the person to person, and uh, you know how uh, each and every one of us can get mm -hmm. Um, good level of care. Thank you so much for that, Richa. So I'll go ahead to my next question. And uh, is the role of public health care worker during COVID-19 um, different than what it would have been in the normal circumstances? 
because as you all know that COVID-19 has hit us and everyone is stretched. So I just wanted to get an insight as to what that means. I guess so for sure. From my knowledge, definitely there has been uh, a lot of redeployment and diversion of staff during this time, particularly um, in local municipalities and governmental agencies, such as, for example, the Public Health Agency of Canada. Um, a lot of the efforts now are being solely focused on trying to get a handle on this pandemic um, and to contain it the best that we can until at least a vaccine is widely available. Um, long hours are constantly being put in every single day to monitor the spread of COVID-19 um, and to take the appropriate actions and measures to mitigate the risk to Canadians. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and this applies to all the frontline workers, clinicians, scientists, um, that COVID-19 is a novel disease. And as a globe together, public health professionals are making the best possible de decisions they can with the current evidence-based research and information they have. Um, so with the rising cases, there's also an increased need for contact tracing and disease management. So yeah, because these are very, very stressful times, there has definitely been um, uh, like a, it's been very unprecedented and some individuals who originally may have been in other sectors and may have not been working in, let's say, infectious disease or pandemic control um, are now experiencing budget cuts within their fields and are being redeployed to specifically COVID operations just so uh, public health can get those extra hands on board because they're uh, very, very needed in this moment. So yes, definitely it's very challenging um, right now for uh, public health workers during the pandemic. Uh, you're so right, uh, Richa. Um, I'm just thinking like during these unprecedented times, uh, we cannot uh, thank enough our frontline workers, all the great work that they have been doing. Um, everyone has been uh, totally stretched going above and beyond um, their capacities in whatever way, shape or form. So we all we can be is um, thankful for all the wonderful work that they have been doing. So, okay, I'll head to my next question. What are the public health recommendations for the flu shot in the fall of 2020? Yeah, so definitely um, if you're familiar with, there's a phrase going around called the twindemic right now, um, which essentially is emphasizing that there's a possibility of our seasonal flu season to coincide with the COVID outbreak um, creating possibly a double threat uh, for the health of our population. So there was a lot of concern that increased flu infections uh, may exacerbate or magnify the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic um, as seen through increased ICU admis admissions and increasing the burden on our healthcare systems, um, which is why it is imperative that um, local public health units are strongly encouraging all Canadians able um, medically um, to take their to take their flu shot, which is completely safe to take. Um, so I would encourage you to go out to your local pharmacies or get in contact with your family physicians to find out where and when um, they can receive their flu shot. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, I do know that now even the local pharmacies, they have started giving the flu, flu shots, but it's just that at this point, probably it's more available to um, people who who's maybe the age rate uh, like it's probably age related or people who are immune compromised and things like that so probably they'll get preference but definitely down the road i think everyone will kind of be able to get it um that leads me to my next question um like COVID 19 has really really impacted our lives and um everyone has, uh, it, they are not being able to live their normal lives, basically. And there is, this is somewhat like a new normal, you can call. So what are the best public health resources that one can access during these difficult times? Yeah, so um, COVID-19, like you said, has truly impacted um, everyone. But there are definitely lots of resources um, that are made available to individuals. Um, and Canadians during this pandemic. So I'd recommend that um, those interested in wanting to get health specific resources, um, like mental health resources, um, to reach out to your family physicians to see um, what's available and what programs and interventions um, 
that are currently running within your municipality or your cities or your, even your local communities. Um, I'd also recommend going to your local public health unit or Ministry of Health website to see where they have several links available for resources supporting mental health, um, addiction, self-help, coaching, um, all, all things like that. So you can nav navigate through those sites and find the appropriate links that might be beneficial to you if you uh, do feel like you need access to those resources. Um, in addition to that, you can definitely use your social support networks as resources in case you need uh, mental support during this pandemic, um, which is especially important considering um, due to lockdowns, we've been limited to the number of friends and families um, that we can see. So optimizing those uh, personal relationship relations and using them as tools to better your mental health um, can definitely be a resource during this time. Um, and then in terms of financial support programs, there are ongoing um, employment insurance programs as well. Um, if any Canadians need to seek financial aid during this time as well. So there is a lot of information that is available, that is readily available for all of us. And it is as simple as just uh, going into the internet and accessing them um, on a regular basis and uh, try and deal with uh, your uh, personal, um, I guess, uh, personal self-care, if I can put it that way. Um, I know that Again, these are very, very difficult times. Uh, and for you as a public health student, um, what is your experience during this pandemic? Uh, yeah, so for sure, as a student, um, this is definitely a very interesting time to be a public health student. Oftentimes, um, a lot of focus and funding is allocated towards acute health care and medicine like hospitals and specialist clinics, but it's important for people to realize that public health in itself is such a huge, huge sector that oversees many different facets of health. So for instance, in my learnings, I've learned that public health looks at specifically infectious disease, chronic disease, travel health, food safety, immunization, emergency preparedness and response, which is what we're going through right now, um, injury prevention, health promotion, and surveillance. So I've already had the opportunity to take several courses um, right now, which I'll let you know a few. So I'm taking an epidemiology course right now, which studies the distri distribution of diseases, um, a social determinants of health course right now, which um, focuses on the underlying driving socioeconomic factors of health, a sustainable environmental health course right now, which looks at the burden of disease through a lens of the environment and ongoing issues such as climate change and also a research for health course, um, which teaches us about suitable research methodology designs for studies. So in all these courses, interestingly, we were able to take this context of COVID-19 now and apply all the different concepts um, that I've learned thus far in my curriculum. So just to give you an example, for instance, with regards to one of my courses, the Social Determinants of Health course, um, we can see that there's hotspots in the GTA or Greater Toronto Area for COVID-19, um, which are neighborhoods with high density housing arrangements and possibility of um, those inhabiting those areas of uh, lower socioeconomic statuses. So a virus in itself does not discrim discriminate against who it infects, but somehow we can see that there are upstream and underlying inequities within our system that have caused certain communities to be at more risk for COVID-19. So this is where public health would step in to address those inequities um, and find the appropriate and plausible solutions. So while all this craziness may be going on in the world, um, as future public health professionals, as I can probably say on behalf of my, um, my colleagues and the students in my class, we're, we're watching, we're learning every step of the way during this pandemic and hope that this will better prepare us for our careers in public health in future epidemics and pandemics. That was a very, very comprehensive answer, Richa. And I'm just thinking that it uh, really entails a lot of uh, different aspects of your lives, uh, which I actually touched upon through public health. So, um, I know, again, we keep saying that this is a very difficult time. And um, from a student's uh, standpoint, um, I think, again, this is really very challenging because a typical learning would have been in uh, 
school setting where uh, with this, the traditional way of the teachers coming and there's the interaction uh, with the student and the teachers and the TAs and all that. And all of a sudden with the, with the COVID pandemic, all that has stopped and uh, everyone shifted to the online learning platform. And I just cannot imagine how hard it would be uh, from a student's standpoint to be learning all this. So I was just wondering if you can just shed some light as to some of the challenges that you are going through maybe for all this. Yeah, so definitely um, one of the largest challenges of this pandemic is this uh, ongoing transition to online everything, whether it be through your job, um, your extracurriculars or your schooling. Um, because everything is online, it's actually incredibly difficult. Um, if it weren't for COVID-19 for me personally, I would be completing my master's in London, Ontario right now. Um, but due to restrictions, everything has been moved to an online setting. So I think I can speak on behalf of the other students in my class as well, that it has been incredibly diff uh, difficult so far, um, just in terms of interacting with others online, um, because you lose out on those in-person connections with your professors, um, colleagues, and networks from the school and the opportunities that you get just by attending school. Um, and also for students that are have been subjected to the Zoom platform, um, everyone can contest that Zoom fatigue is a very real issue, even with students like myself being on their computers and laptops um, and on meetings all day. Um, however, that being said, it's important to not get stuck into that mindset that um, the stress is overwhelming and that you're unable to make friends and I'm missing out on those um, in-person meetings, but make best of the situation at hand and do the best that you can in that moment. Um, with the increased workload and students in, um, in the houses with their families, which can also be micro stressors um, and have an impact on your environment. Um, there's several things you can do, such as going for walks, um, getting exercise, providing a routine for yourself. Um, these things, can, they might be small, but they do add a little bit of comfort to your already hectic lifestyle um, as a student. Um, one thing that I, in my personal experience, I would recommend is always making sure that you take breaks for yourself um, and ensuring that you make time for yourself and do some things that make you um, happy throughout the day. So personally for myself, I find myself in the kitchen um, as a means to relieve stress and as a creative outlet. So I would truly recommend also taking advantage of your social support networks, like I had mentioned previously, um, whether that be through your friends, your, uh, your family, your colleagues, um, and take time to do fun activities, to socialize, to maintain, maintain that part of your life. And even if you can't do it um, in person, there's several online platforms such as like Netflix Party. You can watch a movie with your friends. Um, House Party, which is a an app to play some games with your friends, or even um, like my program has uh, social gatherings through Zoom. So we make it a a little more of a fun setting as opposed to school. But there really is no limit of what you can or cannot do. But I do encourage any other students um, like myself to go out get some fresh air, give yourself some breaks. Um, make time to socialize and uh, partake in your hobbies. I, re I really like that idea of you um, having that positive attitude that uh, this is not the end of the world and uh, we have to learn to deal with it. And uh, some small, simple things um, in your daily routine is going to take you a long way. Uh, so how have the schools try to ease your transition and provide resources for the students. I mean, all that that you said right now was from your own perspective, what all you can do to make things lighter and better for you. But from the school's perspective, um, is there anything that has been offered? Uh, yes. Yeah. So for me personally, I know schools have been trying to ease the transition for new students like myself. I started in September um, as a master's student. Um, so just even providing online social events, like I mentioned through Zoom, was something that my um, program decided to implement um, and creating opportunities for people to get involved through committees and clubs um, to maintain those interactions with people. Um, there's also several resources available um, that have shifted to providing leave, uh, relief online 
um, through group care workshops. Um, I know Western Services has their own uh, platform, peer-to-peer -peer resources and community resources uh, for Western specifically. Um, I know they're also providing full-time virtual models of care through the provision of telephone counseling um, and video counseling via Zoom. And depending on the urgency, counselors are also available to see students um, on campus. Um, also, there's also wellness resources that extend to uh, students, international students, LGBTQ plus students, and for those in need of crisis counseling as well. Um, with respect to COVID-19, I know on campus there is ongoing testing services as well for students who believe they may be in contact with someone who um, tested positive for COVID, as well as ongoing flu shots available. Um, so, oh, also for students who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 and are currently um, in isolation, I know uh, universities are providing additional mental health resources in case um, students are feeling any um, feelings of isolation or guilt or worry, as well as even access to food supplies. So I know they've um, definitely been trying to do um, their part and help uh, provide the best resources for students during this um, unprecedented time. Well, that's that's really really good to know because that uh, what you're telling me is like a, a, at that level of detail. There's a lot of uh, things that are really being done for the student, and that's very very encouraging. That's really good to know that uh, the government and the universities and all are doing their best. Now this brings me to um, another question: Is that um, you are pursuing uh, a public health program? And uh, there's a lot of time, effort, and money that is being put into this program. And, um, you know, there is this uncertainty right now uh, with COVID-19, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen, uh, what the careers are going to be like. So what are some of your concerns uh, or some of the concerns that the students might have currently who are in school and who will be graduating out of the pandemic? Um, like, I mean, what, what, what are they feeling? Like, I mean, it's all this hard work that they are going to be doing and um, there they doesn't seem to be an exact plan as to what is going to happen in the next year or so. So what are the concerns that the students are uh, feeling at this point? Yeah, so definitely, like you said, an unprecedented time um, many undergraduates and graduates I know are facing, you know, economic turmoil and apprehension due to lack of employment, layoffs, and reduced opportunities. Um, even within my professional program, uh, we have placements um, which are now being confined only to Canadian organizations due to risks of students going international and, and in increasing their exposure to COVID-19. Um, so. In terms of that, it's definitely unfortunate because we are losing out on some of those opportunities. Um, but this is the situation at hand, and we know that containing COVID-19 is of number one importance right now. Um, but yeah, many many students who have graduated this year are struggling to find jobs, um, and as a result, are facing um, increased financial burden. Many students also come out of their programs with thousands of dollars in debt and are eager to pay off those loans and get, get that weight off their shoulders. But with the current economy, it, it definitely adds to the stress of students. Um, also, a lot of programs have barely adjusted their tuition fees um, for programs, despite switching to an online platform. So those you know, $30,000, $40,000 loans um, definitely <laughs> increase the financial burden. And with the addition of job uncertainty now, um, it's it's very stressful for newly graduated students or um, current students that are expecting to graduate within the year. Um, with an online platform, a lot of students are also struggling to adjust to the online learning because of the reduced um, hands-on experiences and in-person discussions and um, learning. So it also makes some students feel like they're being slightly robbed of their entire education and not to be a little dramatic, but it is a very truly difficult situation that has impacted everybody globally, particularly for students as well, who are now trying to um, establish and kickstart their careers. Um, but with that being said, to 
end this on a positive note. We are now hearing some promising feedback on the COVID-19 vaccines that are upcoming, um, which will be instrumental for Canada to get back on board um, economically and socially. So hopefully um, everyone will be able to benefit for that and even the students as well. Well, I have to say, Richard, that um, I would like to congratulate you and uh, thank you so much for taking this opportunity and uh, giving some of your thoughts uh, on, the, on the public health program. And I um, actually want to even uh, commend uh, you and students like you um, who uh, during these difficult times are, you know, they are going through this uh, process of learning uh, with, with a positive mindset and um, obviously, when you think positively, uh, when there is hope uh, around the corner, uh, things come out in a good way. And so hang in there, you and all the students, and I'm sure everything is going to work out and things will go well. So thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. For those of you who are watching, I would encourage you to please provide as much support as you can and, you know, during these unprecedented times, I mean, on a regular day, we need to make sure we're physically and mentally strong. I think during these unprecedented times, we need to be even more so. And some great advice, if you can, um, if you would like to donate to the Trillium Health Burgers Foundation um, through the mental health unit, you can just, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the link. Please do go there and donate generously. I'm gonna ask Anu to come up and um, and say goodbye and, and say special some of our very special people, including the folks at Y Media. Anu? And uh, as always, I would like to thank Jake Deer, who is very active in the community, and he is also in the board of the Trillium Health Partners Foundation. Thank you so much, Jake, for always being a part of uh, the initiative of COVID Wellness Series and being the moderator of the series. And I would also like to thank our technical partners, our um, Y Media House, uh, Preet Jaswal, Yudhvi Jaswal, Gurpreet Ji, Angaji, and the whole team. Thank you so much. Without you, this series would not have been possible. Thank you so much. <laughs>